Last month, NVIDIA, the maker of computer chips specialized for artificial intelligence, claimed its place as the world's most valuable company. This week, it reported an astounding 94% increase in revenue from last year. The AI revolution is most certainly upon us, but is the world prepared for the scale and speed at which it will advance? And are there enough safeguards against the dangers that it poses? Former Google CEO and executive chairman Eric Schmidt has co-authored a new book on the very topic titled Genesis, Artificial Intelligence, Hope and the Human Spirit. His co-authors are the illustrious late diplomat Henry Kissinger and the former Microsoft executive Craig Mundy. I should note I'm a senior advisor for Eric's philanthropic ventures. Pleasure to have you on. Great to be back. So for you, you've been writing about AI and studying it very closely for a while now. You write in the book that the, we're going to get to the point where the AI will start writing its own code mm -hmm. and setting its own objectives. Right. That sounds scary. Yeah. Explain what you mean and is it scary? Uh, it's very scary and it goes something like this. Today, programmers are using roughly these systems for half of their coding. Most people think that eventually most programs will be written by the AI itself. When the program can rewrite itself, which is called recursive self-improvement, it's going to gain much quicker than we can evolve as humans. What's going to stop it? How do you contain it? How do you make sure it doesn't learn to lie, to deceive, to do terrible behaviors that we can't monitor. And just to understand that, so will it, when it does this recursive self-learning, will it be doing it towards some objective, some broad objective we have given it, or can it alter that objective itself? Well, in the short term, humans control these things. So everything you use today, some human said, learn this, you know, go find this and so forth. At some point, <clears throat> if the system is organized around curiosity and to seek power and influence, it could begin to set its own objective functions. The technical term is objective functions, it's what it trains against. So you could have a situation where the system decides that the most important thing is to learn everything and then begin to do things and lie about them, right? So we couldn't monitor it. There is a set of triggers. One is where it begins to learn on its own. Another is where the agents begin to talk into non-human languages, so we can't see what they're doing. A third would be when the system says, hey, I want to make copies of myself, and it doesn't bother to ask the human for permission. These are trigger points. I want to say, by the way, that everyone's always concerned about the killer robot um, in these, because of all the movies. I'm much more concerned about um, bad humans, right, evil humans, using this in nefarious ways. In our book, we spend a lot of time talking about polymaths. Polymaths are incredibly important. You know all about this, Einstein, so forth and so on. These systems will effectively put a polymath in the pocket of every person on the planet. We're not ready for that. But that sounds good. Uh, it depends on your view of good and evil, right? You and I are both uh, optimists. We believe in essential human nature, but we know that there are, that there are evil. And I also think that you're going to see a, a change in world order. We talk about this in the book at quite some length. As you know, Dr. Kissinger was the author of the world order ideas. In a situation where all of this progress is driven by a, a democratic model that comes out of the United States and our allies, the UK mostly, and Chinese, which is not driven by a democracy, that fight is the fight for the ages. Because if the competition is for that ability, whoever gets there first can apply it to even scale and stay even farther ahead. It's a real race. You've said that the US is ahead. By how much and how worried should we be that that late lead could slip? So far, it seems as though you know, all the, the major research is coming out of the US. Two years ago, I told you here that we had a two-year advantage against China. It looks like it's over. China has now released three models in the last month, and they all have the same opportunity and power that the American models. And I go, how did this happen, right? We have all of these sanctions. We have all of these ways in which this incredible hardware that NVIDIA makes and others is not available to the Chinese. Well, we don't fully know, but we do know that with enormous amount of money and the great talent in China, which is very real, 
they are very close. It's very different now than two years ago. Right. But they're in the race, and they're in the race of the most important technology that will ever be invented in our lifetimes. Because the arrival of a non-human intelligence with this kind of power under our control is very important. Go through this scenario where China ultimately beats us, and it reflects Chinese values, which are not democratic. And it, it, it inures to benefit the Chinese government, which is a monopoly, as opposed to the democracies of the world. Before I let you go, I have to ask you about, uh, you're a multi-billionaire technologist. There is another multi-billionaire <laughs> technologist very close to the, the new White House, the new president. What do you think of Elon Musk, his, his involvement in politics? Is it basically good, but does it worry you? How do you think about it? It's too new to know. We've never seen this kind of a partnership. Elon is a truly brilliant man. If you look, he bought Twitter, lost a lot of money, used it to help get the president elected, made all the money back, and now has an influence that's far greater than any other technologist in history, including people like Bill Gates and so forth. We'll see how long it lasts. It's probably positive for technology, and it's certainly positive for Elon's businesses. <laughs> On that note, Eric Schmidt, Always a pleasure. Thank you.